matrices, introduction to matrices. A matrix is just a rectangular array of numbers which are called entries. Matrices vary in size, they are given an order. Number of rows by number of columns is the order. We do not multiply these out. Okay, very important. Matrices we denote by capital letters. Here are examples of matrices. We can have a row, a column, or even a square matrix, which is three rows and three columns. That's the order. So the order of above matrices, the first one, number of rows, there's one row and three columns. For the second one, its order is this one has three rows and one column, and this one here has three rows and three columns. There's one, two, three rows there, and one, two, three columns there. Example right, one right, the order of the following matrices. A, one, two, three rows and two columns, so this one is three by two. B, one row and one, two, three columns, so this one has an order of one by three, and this one has one, two, three, four, five rows and one column, so this one is a five by one. And we can identify the elements, that means the numbers inside the matrix, by their row number and their column number. So in matrix A, because it's talking about matrix A, we need to look at this first matrix right here, matrix A. The element 2, 2, that means the second row, which is right here, and the second column, and that's the second column. And they intersect right over here at this number, which is number 1. And we can do it for anything. Matrices are used so we can store information. For two matrices to be equal, they must have the same number of rows and the same number of columns. That means the order must be the same. They must have the same elements in the same position. That's the only way they can be equal. So for example two here, if we've got matrices A and matrix B are equal, find the values of the unknown pronouns. So if A must equal B, then this one here, 1, 2, C, 7, is equal to 1, 2, 5, and D. So same positions have to be equal. Well, 1's equal to 2's are equal. C is equal to 5, and D must be equal to 7. Okay, same positions. Example 3. Four, there are four rows of three seats in each row on a bus. So four rows of three seats. If zero is indicated, used to indicate a seat is vacant, that's the zero, and one is used to indicate a seat is occupied, write down a matrix that represents the following. So let's do part A. The second and third rows are occupied, but the first and fourth are vacant. So here we go, let's do this. Four rows, one, two, three, four rows. You don't need to put these numbers, I'm only doing it just so you show you. And seats, one, two, three seats. Second and third rows are occupied. Now, if they're occupied, they need the number one. So second row is all occupied. Third row is all occupied, they all get one. First row are vacant, so they get zeros. And the fourth row is vacant, that gets zeros. Part B, only the last seat on the bus is occupied. So let's do it again. I'm not going to put the numbers on the sides anymore. If only the last seat on the bus is occupied, that means row number four and seat number three, which is right here, is occupied. So that gets a one. All the rest are empty. So three zeros on the first, three zeros on the second, three zeros on the third, and the fourth row has two zeros and then the number one. Example four says there are four clubs in a local football league. Team A has three senior teams and two junior teams. Team B has two senior teams, one junior team. Team C has one senior team, two junior teams. And Team D has three senior teams and three junior teams. Represent this information in a matrix. So again, we'll do it this time. We will put team A. Team B, Team C, Team D, just so you can see it. S for the senior, J for the junior. 
draw up my matrix, so it's ready to go. First one has 3 and 2, team B has 2 and 1, team C has 1 and 2, and team D has 3 and 3. And therefore we have a matrix for this class. That is exercise 3A questions.